Hello and welcome to the Limitless Outdoors podcast. Today we are continuing on with part three of our series of prepping and planning and executing a hunt uh, in Alaska for moose. And in this part three, we're going to be discussing what does the hunt look like? What kind of animal we're looking for? What's the country like? How do we engage it? How do we navigate it? How do we pull this hunt off successfully? And so I'm excited about this one. This is what it's all about for me. All that planning, prepping, everything leads to this right here. And so just want to kind of give you some tips, tactics, how we go about it and Mm -hmm. what's possible out there. Right. In the first episode, we went ahead and we talked about the tag process and we talked about, uh, you know, getting somebody uh, actually in uh, to fly you in. And then, and and we went through the process of that and how to know where to hunt and what you have to do as far as the legal requirements are concerned there. And then the um, the second episode, we talked a lot about the gear. Mm-hmm, we went yeah. into uh, in depth into a lot of the gear. I'm sure we might touch on a little bit of that gear this episode. But really, it's not what it's how. So this episode is going to be more like how is that gear being used? For me, the hunt starts the second you leave your house. Like, oh, okay, all right, there we go. right. Yeah. And so we take all of our gear to the airport. We're making sure all of our bags are under 50 pounds, mm-hmm. right? That we have. Uh, we got our guns, locks, all that stuff for our travel cases. Uh, one of the things gear wise I like to have for uh, my gun case, I like to have wheels on it so you can roll that thing around real easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we're off and honestly we run into, I mean, when you're traveling, you're running into so many issues. We've gotten delayed, we've gotten all sorts and the smaller oh, yeah. the plane is, the mm-hmm. more chance you have of getting delayed. So as right. you go farther out, like and for us, when you're hunting out of one of the, the smaller towns in Rural Alaska, where there's no roads, that's what I mean when I say that, where you're flying into them. Okay. Um, there's a lot of times that you can get stopped there. So the towns don't even have a road going to the town? No, no, you're totally oh, that's great. You're flying yeah, in okay. and flying out. So okay. Okay. that's the deal. And so when we talk about getting there and the hunt getting going, all these weather considerations, you get to your air taxi guy, and sometimes you show up there and he's like, hey, we're not flying for three days. Oh, boy. Make yourself yeah. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So, so, so what, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so you have this, you spent all this money. You've gotten everything squared away. You have 15 days to do this hunt. Yeah. And now you're not flying out for three days. Oh. Oh, there's there's horror stories of people going out to like mm-hmm. Kodiak Island in particular. Yeah. You don't, you mm-hmm. never go hunting. Now that would You be, literally get stuck in a hotel. That's and you can't I would get like there to or yeah, back. Kodiak, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, Alaska is... Really? Alaska okay. in weather is... I mean, we've dealt with hurricane force storms, like biblical events up there. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's true. And yeah, that's the crazy thing is the, that's why I say the hunt, it's such an, when I'd say the hunt begins, it's an adventure, right? And the mm-hmm. whole thing is part of the process that you've been looking forward to. Yeah. And, um, but you get there and I've, I've had multiple times where it's three days mm-hmm. you know, we're not flying wow. anywhere for three days and yeah. you sit there. So what do you wait. do? And not much. You talk. <laughs> Talk, talk with people out. and you know you uh, better de- really like the people you're hunting with yeah it depends on what you have going on yeah. we've been able to do a little bit of fishing here and there but yeah. a lot of times where these villages are situated um your moose are 50 to 80 miles away where mm-hmm. you're going to be going so hunting. Just start hiking i mean yeah, yeah no <laughs> and it's like jungle out there on yeah. the way in western alaska mm-hmm. but um mm-hmm. yeah so we get out there and yeah. finally we get our spot or we get going and we get in the plane first thing if you haven't ever been in a small plane uh, before and you're not real familiar with it, it's not like flying in a big plane. If you're prone to any kind of air sickness, oh yeah, then you're gonna want Dramamine with you, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And you yeah. want to take that before you fly, yeah. But just an incredible experience. You get in the plane and you get up in the air now because a lot of that area is real flat out there, so you can't see out. Mm-hmm. But once you get up in the air, you can see everything and the topography, and you're flying in and you're seeing moose and you're seeing bears and mm-hmm. just yeah. glaciers. And, and you're like, can you drop me off right there? Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you see, yeah, you see all this stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And then you're flying out there and you're talking to the pilot and he's like, well, I'm not going to drop you off on that lake. <laughs> well, why? Well, that's because that's where Bubba G uh-huh. hunts every single year. Oh, and, um, see, now we're going back to the system. Yeah. 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 So this comes kind of, kind of down. Yeah, to now the, but now we're back to that first episode yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so yeah, people are um, like, oh, I could just go wherever I want and kill a moose. Look at there. Just walking. It's like, no, yeah. there's, 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 a, there's a gatekeeper. Everybody kind of, yeah, everybody, yeah. these guys guard all that stuff. Yeah, that's and good. So it's a reality. Yeah. Right or wrong. I don't know, but it's a reality. I, I would, I would, I would err on the side, of, you know, that it's a good thing. You know, I would say that's a, that's a good thing. You need gatekeepers. You need people that are going to be like, at least, yeah. Yeah, and they yeah, respect, like, if you find a spot, they respect it and honor mm-hmm. it, especially if you've been coming back year after yeah, year. Yeah, and the cool thing so. that you know is that they're not going to do, they're not going to do it to you either. Yeah, yeah right? that's, they're see, not that's doing it to them. They're thing, not going right? to do yeah, it to you. Street, so. And they understand how much money and the dreams that guys are coming out here with, and they don't, the last thing they want, yeah. like, 
this isn't hunting whitetails where you're hearing gunshots all over. Like right. you're out there and it's nothing. Oh yeah, opening day in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, like it's madness. It's, oh, it is. Yeah, oh, it's, I don't oh, do all oh, with that. It's yeah, it's, it's this is, nuts. It's nuts. They're, this is the only thing you hear yeah. is planes going yeah. overhead every now and then. Wow, that's it. Yeah, this yeah. is the experience yeah. here. Yeah, so. that's great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have to ask, you guys seem to hunt in pretty much the same spot every year, right? We've moved mm. a lot over the years, but you're in a honestly. very similar region, right? Yeah, we're okay, within eighty so, miles. So I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, is like, <laughs> it, do you guys have like, do you have a gatekeeper that's like making sure that people aren't hunting your spot either? No. So okay. the deal is, is it's it's first come first serve. Okay. Um, with with that stuff. Okay. Uh, but that being said, um, there's there's so much good country. It's crazy. Like yeah. we'll be flying over and we'll flying out to a spot, and we've hunted every year except the last two years. We've hunted different spots. Mm-hmm. Never hunted the same spot twice, mm-hmm. and so. Um, you'll be flying out there and you'll fly over and you'll see three or four bulls all together just sitting out there and they're big paddles. Just, they look mm-hmm. like sheets of plywood yeah. down there as you're flying over. You're like, oh, drop me there. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so you get into your spot and you don't yeah. see hardly, we've landed before. We've flown over an area, not seen a thing, landed and pulled out the binos and seen five to 10 bulls. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or yeah. down a hillside. And you're just like, yeah. I never saw a single one of those flying in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, well, Colton was telling me, was it yesterday we were, we, you were showing me the photos? Of when you guys were in Alaska, and so you had like the before and after photo. Maybe we can like. Oh yeah, how much the vegetation yeah. changed. Yeah. So and, time. And, and and what I said was, what blows my mind is when you look at this photo, it looks flat. But yeah. really, <laughs> yeah, that brush is six the, to eight feet right, tall. Right, right, right. So like, you can be looking over, and it looks flat. But really, the brush is six to eight feet tall, and yeah. there could be a, a whole. You said a, there could be a moose bedded down. We had five. Bulls right underneath. Yeah, us and you this had no, you, you, you couldn't just, see them. Yeah, exactly. We knew yeah. they were all there. Five bulls could not see one of them. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah they just lay down and like, oh, and you would have just if you were just walking through the area, yeah. you would have walked right by them and been like, "There's no moose in this valley." Yeah, yeah. we yeah. call them whales because yeah. they pop out I of the wonder. brush, they surface, and they're like, <laughs> and then they go back. And that in is and actually gone. more like the moose call. Yeah, it, 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 it is. is. Yeah. No, I wasn't exaggerating. You were attempting to do that. That's funny. Well, it's it's funny because um, I I have seen uh again like part of what I do is moderate the comments on on the videos and whatnot, and so I'll see people that will complain about that. Oh, all the moose are dead. They're all gone. You know, and I'm like, I'm I'm reading these comments. I'm thinking, no, I don't think so. Not really. I don't think so. So, like, what do you think that the the population's like out there? It varies. I mean, everything's so cyclical, right? Like, there you there used to be piles of caribou out where we are mm-hmm. um, hunting. Now there's almost none. It's non-existent. Just mm-hmm. thou- just a few thousand caribou left. Uh, moose, lots of things affect them. Hard winters, predation, a uh, lot of brown bears out there. And uh, grizzly, interior grizzlies specifically are really hard on moose calves. And yeah. so when those numbers ebb and flow of the brown bears, you have impact on the moose. But right mm-hmm. now, you know, the areas that we've been hunting out there the last few years we're seeing a lot of mature bulls, but we're also seeing a lot of young bulls. And that's a good thing. You got a lot of good stock yeah. coming okay, up. Okay, I got you. Um, but there's and still a lot can't of kill those. Too. They're, 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 not, they're too small to kill. No, and so, yeah, that's so, one yeah, of the things we're right. going to talk about in a minute here yeah. is the size restrictions, size yeah. restrictions yeah. Right. on these moose and how to figure that out. Yeah. Okay, so um, so you, now you've you've landed. You've gotten through the whole hurdle. You know, you've now been sitting inside of a, in, in, a, in a town for three days. And then you got to your spot. Now, after you get to your spot, what do you do? How do you well, set up camp first. Yeah, you know, we, you got to get yourself set up. Um, I, the very first thing I do after I get out of the plane Mm -hmm. is I pull my binos out and I just start looking for moose because you just finally, (laughs) yeah, you know, and we get to hunt up there a lot, but oh my goodness. So you do that even before you start setting up your camp? You know what? I'm not saying that that's how you should do it, but I'm just telling, (laughs) I'm just kind of putting myself in a position of being a kid that dreamed about hunting up there my whole life. Yeah. And then... You put in all this work, and I'm blessed to be able to hunt it as much as I do. But still, every year when I get there, the first thing I want to do is just pull my binos out and just take in. Like, I want to see that big moose standing out there. Yeah. And just, oh. Yeah. And so... You want to breathe it in. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I would say the first thing that you do when you get there is just thank the Lord for yeah. allowing you yeah. the privilege of getting to see yeah. this aspect it of this creation. It is beautiful country. I mean, it's, it's absolutely yeah, beautiful. It's, it's I would say... nothing. I, like I don't know, has nothing on Alaska. You no, know, it really doesn't. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, sorry. No, <laughs> yeah. no we we but love like, Idaho, I mean, but just, Alaska yeah. is just a whole different animal. Yeah, yeah. It, really it looks. I mean, it it just really looks gorgeous. My wife loves the like her her favorite videos that you guys do are the moose hunting videos. Okay, yeah. she loves moose. For you know, like she's that type of person where you know, like 
she loves the animal, but she's like, she loves it on her dinner table too. Yeah, so yeah. she would love to cook the animal. Yeah. She's like, I love it. it yeah. I bet it tastes delicious. But she it looks does. at the country. She likes watching the country and she sees like the big, the big satellite dishes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And she's like, wow. Like, yeah. look at them. And she'll, she'll say that to me. She's like, we're, like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, you know, you know, this is, I work with you guys, you know, I work for you guys. And yeah. I, I, you know, like I see it all the time and I'm sitting there going like this and she goes, look, look, why are you not looking? Look at the, look at the moose. She's got yeah. it pulled up on the <laughs> That's on awesome. TV and I'm like, I saw, uh, okay. yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> God, so, and she's like, you don't know, you need to get one of these for me. And I'm like, yeah. okay. That would be the, <laughs> that would be my biggest recommendation is to breathe it in. Like my yeah. goal, I, I can't remember. I always spot an animal before I set up the tent. Like, oh, yeah. whether it's a moose or yeah. a bear or something, yeah. but like, I always spot an animal and I just take it in for a moment and just like, it takes a while. You kind of jet lagged when you come in and yeah. all of a sudden you got to just kind of, kind of breathe and let everything catch up and yeah. just kind of get centered again. And, um, but I would just hear, this would be my encouragement. If you're planning your once in a lifetime or first time in a lifetime, yeah. uh, hunt for moose up there. Like when you get there, just take it in for a minute how about, and then start setting up. How about this? You said that how long is the, how long is the hunt season? Uh, 11 days. It's 11 mm-hmm. days. So. If it's a once in a lifetime, I would say, honestly, if it's a once in a lifetime, you know, make it 22 days. So you go like really long, like, ba- you know, take it, take as much, as much time as humanly possible. In other words, like yeah, I know you guys are, as much as you can, but you know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like yeah. as much as you, as you possibly soak can it in. so that you can soak it in so that yeah. that way you don't feel the pressure of having to run out there. Like, like one thing that I hate, but I, the, I, I love hunting yeah. and it, but what kills it for me the most is when I feel pressure when I'm hunting. Like yeah, I have to do this, yeah. you know, I have to kill this animal. I have to put that meat in the freezer. I have to do, you know, when it's and, a race and yeah, yeah it's horrible. And, and, it's horrible and that's feeling. the worst. And it makes you like, so I would say, I would encourage anybody like just, you know, and then you can yeah. continue on, but like, like take extra time so that that way you've got, you, you're like, you know what? I can set the camp up today. I can scope for moose. I can yeah. take in the country. I can do a little fishing. You guys do some fishing, right? There. Yeah, yeah we did. Like, there's yeah. a lot going on. Like you guys got yeah. a lot to do. So fish like, don't know fish lake. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Long so, story. <laughs> okay. So so like I see, you know, you guys are fishing. You're like, but if you're pressured and you only have a limited amount of time and you're like, oh, but I have 11 days, you know, yeah. and you don't come early, yeah. then you can't really like enjoy the whole experience. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Alaska is an experience. It's mm-hmm. the best way to put yeah, it. Yeah. I like to plan on getting out there two days early. Yeah. Um, gives you a little bit of margin. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. gives you plenty of time and then plan on staying two days after season two because there you getting go. people out and stuff. If you go all the way down to the wire, the only time I didn't kill a moose in Alaska, just for information here, was I had to preach on a Sunday and I could have moved it, but I had already committed to it. Right. And so... We're getting there and Shane had killed a huge moose and then we're passing up moose and looking at moose and we hadn't found a good one yet. I still had three days left in the season and Mark came in and picked me up and I told myself I'd never schedule anything that cut cut out part of the mm-hmm. season because I could have killed a moose. It was just right. the rut was going crazy. Right. Yeah. And so it's yeah, a lot give easier yourself... for you guys to get out and do some elk hunting, you know, but, yeah. but this is a special hunt. This is Yeah. Like... And you're going, like we talked about earlier, you're going all that distance. Right. And you might yeah. as well make right. sure you go the distance. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, yep. if this is going to be something that you're going to do, you better like better do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that there's too many people that are just kind of half hearting. They're going through life half hearting things yeah. and they're not really like committing what the Bible says that a double minded man should expect to receive nothing from the Lord. Yeah. And, you know, and that's my, you know, that's actually my verse for this year is Ecclesiastes nine ten. Um, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Cause there's no opportunity in the grave where you're going is what he says there. And so, like when you're talking about this, this is a big undertaking. And if you don't think it is, then you don't understand it. Right. Um, and you don't understand that this is such an opportunity and a blessing. You don't know whether you, where your health is going to be. You know, we see these different sports guys that are just keeling over heart stuff. Like you just, you don't know what's going to go on. And so, man, you, when you're there, be all there and do it with everything that you got. Right. right. Might as well. You got to commit. I mean, yeah. you know, commit yeah. and, don't just, and, and be, that's good. Okay. So then, so then now you've gotten there. Um, you've, you know, set up your camp. You're you're doing a little fishing. You guys are relaxing. You're you're maxing and relaxing. You see, yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, and you see, um, you know, you see some moose out there. So so, do you know like where do you like how how would somebody know where to hunt? How about that? How about like where? How would they know where that's, they should go to? Where that's they, good. You know? Okay, so I get that question a lot yeah. from guys. <clears throat> where do I go? Yeah. Where do I? What do I look for? This, I'm telling you, the air taxi guy is like your biggest ally on the face of the earth. 
because they know what Google so be, Earth. So, so, so be nice it. to him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, they, they know where moose are. They know where they yeah. see lots of moose consistently. Right. Yeah. And they want to see you successful. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say selfishly, but they get to fly more loads. They get to make more money. Oh, You're not successful. Yeah. They're only right, flying right. you How out much meat is on a moose? How much meat? Yeah, a load every yeah, time. Exactly. So 1500 yeah, bucks, yeah. where we're hunting, you know, 1500 yeah. bucks again, bam. Yeah. 1500 bucks again. So now, it's now, better just, for you to be successful. Just, them. just to say like, we know how much meat costs. You know, oh, yeah. so, so as people are like kind of scoff at like, well, you could just go to the grocery store and buy meat. You know how much meat costs in the grocery store? Yeah. Now, it's been a Six while. bucks a pound we have for ground beef. Yeah. So we have it. So that's the thing. Like my, my wife and I, like we, we, we eat game meat. You know, we, we're eating deer and bear and, you know, yeah. like squirrels and all that. Like that's what we eat. And we, we don't buy meat in the grocery store unless it's chicken wings. Yeah, mm, you yeah. know, because like you got to kill a lot of chickens. You know? Yeah, you get a lot of wings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we raise we usually raise about fifty chickens every year. Okay, you know, but it, it's such a, I mean a labor intensive process. You know, so we chicken wings, but you know, like we didn't know how much meat cost in the store. Yeah, and you know, we were. I, I said uh, to my wife, "Oh, let's go see how much you know we get to get some ground beef." And I almost hit the floor. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I was like, yeah. "Gal, the last time I I bought ground beef, it was like two fifty a, a pound." Yeah. You know, I'm just, you know, so, so then I did a little quick calculation uh, on your moose and how much it would cost if it was $7 a pound. Now that's a reasonable amount, but I did this on my, on my phone okay. here and you're looking at $6,300. Yeah. Yeah. If you now that's on the low side of meat that, yeah. yeah. And that's on the low side, 6,300 pounds, $300 in meat. Yeah. So now think about how much that hunt costs. We've gotten all up to the stage and everyone's scoffing and being like, well, you could have, you know, because I'll, I'll read the YouTube comments, yeah. I know. And, but then realize how much meat you're actually getting off of these animals. Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And, and then and, you throw in the fact that some of them are like, quality steaks like there you go and exactly and exactly and, and then all that quality, tens of thousands exactly exactly <laughs> so you're looking at you're looking at, a, at an animal you kill a moose you're bringing home ten thousand dollars worth of meat so let's go there totally we so so it, but, it's it's totally worth it in that particular yeah. regards a big part of what we do though is we donate meat right that's a huge part of what we do we do bring home moose meat with us right but we also donate a ton of meat. And well, it goes I, to I wasn't going to pat use. you guys on the back, but yeah. yeah. But like that is, well, that is we're going to talk about this a lot later. This okay. is, yeah, yeah, we're going to major focus. Off here okay, so, so so then so now we'll stay with the whole, whole pro. Let's just right, right, for right, a second. Getting I want to stay with the process of yeah. the hunt here. So we were land, we're doing all these things. Okay, so then so then after you find them, you you find them. You said where where to be able to hunt for them. Yeah. So yeah. Look. So leaning on the air taxi guy, they've always pointed us in the right direction. Yeah. They're going to point you in the right direction too. They'll put you in a good spot. And one of the things in Alaska, just a, a regulation, is you can't hunt the same day they fly. Okay. So keep that yeah. in mind. Regardless. If you're flying Regardless out, Regardless even, even if it's season. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so if season has started already and mm -hmm. you get out there, so you get a little bit late start um, yep. and you show up and a moose comes walking by, you just watch it walk by. Okay. That first day. You and we know hunt. that the rangers are watching. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Like Santa Claus, man. They know when you're <laughs> sleeping. They know when you're yeah. awake. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. No. So yeah, we're watching out for that, right? And um, But so we get there. Moose season gets going. Mm -hmm. uh, we you got to get hot. You got to get ground where you can see. You mm -hmm. got to be able to see. And one of the huge considerations is the brush there. Like it doesn't. We kind of touched on that earlier. It looks like a carpet out there. It looks flat. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's yeah. not. But even the small brush is six to eight feet tall. Yeah. And oh, wow. when a moose lays down, you don't see it. I mean, yeah, they're yeah. just gone. Yeah. And so what what we like to do is we like to get high ground. Um, mm -hmm. And when you fly over, you can make note of different areas. Uh, we have base map on our phones. Okay. Yep. And so the areas that we think we might end up landing in, uh, mm -hmm. we download those maps ahead of time offline so we okay. can use them yep. um, and navigate around there. And so we find high ground and you get up there and you just start glassing. And what, you're, what I'm looking for when I'm glassing is white paddles. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the moose will lay down. You won't see the moose, but you'll see white paddles. Yeah. You'll see those satellite dishes like what my wife calls them. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Potentially. Okay. I mean, sometimes okay. the brush does cover them up. Okay. That's just the yeah. reality of it. But yeah, we go for high ground, but it also goes back to your hunting style too. Some guys, they want to hunt that flat timbered sprucey ground where the moose are just wandering around and you call them in. So mm -hmm. it time of year of when your tag is and when you're in there and how the rut's doing. It you said a lot time of, of year of when your tag is, but you said, but hunting season's pretty short. So well, it just, some tags are in October. 
So there, oh. there's various tags. Oh, okay. There's draw okay, okay. tags and all gotcha, sorts of stuff. Gotcha. But, but not much for non-residents. You no, pretty much can't yeah. do that as a non... You're, yeah. You, you're pretty keep much, it in context yeah. of the non-resident. Yeah. The non-resident's pretty much hunt in the beginning of September. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And generally when we show up, so our season starts the 5th, there's mm-hmm. some that starts the, start the 10th. Um, mm-hmm. But the 5th, these bulls, very few of them are running at all. They're okay. just laying around. Gotcha. So, just shedding their valve. So then what time of day should you be looking out for them? So, so, you know, I mean, I know that sometimes that they're moving around or whatever. So when should you be looking yeah, at them? Honestly, what we've found over the years is that you pretty much have to be looking for them first thing in the morning and in the evening. If it's hot out, that's even more dramatic of an effect it is like first few minutes of light and last few minutes of light define hot 60 degrees like we have yeah 50 yeah even even in the 50s is hot up there 40s feels hot a lot of times when you're hiking around um but it's it's one of those things that especially three seasons ago the moose were literally moving first light and at last light there is no activity during the day and if you were not out there and in position to find them, you're not going to find them. You're just going to be sitting up there and be like, there's no moose in this spot, but they're actually all over the place. Yeah. So and that's a big deal. I, I know a lot of guys get discouraged, but they're waking up, they're waking up after light or getting going after light. You know, they'll have their coffee, yeah. they lounge around and um, then they'll step out of their tent and who knows how many moose have walked by you before you even got out of your tent. Oh, wow. That's like something this- that we do all the time. We pop out at first light. I have seen that. Yeah. yeah I, like, just, oh. I just pop out of the tent all the time. And th- okay. So, so now the next thing that uh, I guess I guess we want to figure out is you, you're saying that the vegetation it's a, it's about like six to eight feet tall. Yeah, yeah. and alder you're talking fourteen, fifteen feet tall. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. that. okay. So, so it's big six to eight willow typically. Yeah, but okay. what you're looking for the time of What's day. What's the vast majority that's out there as far as the vegetation? It depends on the area. It okay. really depends where you're at. Yeah, you, you can be a tundra you can too. Get in spruce. Oh, right. Yeah, you can get tundra spruce. What do you mean by tundra? Because when I think super when you, soft. Okay. Mushy ground that's rolling or you're high step and the totally whole time open, and, like real yeah. low yeah. brush. And when you see a moose out in that, it looks like an elephant walking across the savannah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then they disappear suddenly. Yeah. I mean, when you say tundra, I think, I think just like, you know, snow drifts and stuff like that, you know, but I guess you're talking about an actual, you know, terrain. Yeah. It's yeah. like a rolly, grassy. Okay. Hard yeah. thing to walk through. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so you're looking for these moose and, um, the big thing is, is positioning yourself kind of coming back to the idea of where am I looking? Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in an area, the, the bulls are going to be coming through looking for cows. So if you find cows, you're going to find bulls. Bulls will okay. come through. Okay. Um, but are you, are you, you're not hunting through the rut or is it, well, it gets more and more ruddy as the season goes, but okay. it's definitely not the peak of the rut. That so we're it would be like before the rut. Is that, yeah, and they're kicked in. Yeah, to, okay. You know, they, these gotcha. some bulls okay. will have a few cows with them and stuff. Okay, and it, we've it, never had intense rut action. Yeah. Okay. It varies from year to year. Okay, also. so so that's yeah. the time. That's yeah. the time of year that the. the but the we like to be going. where valleys are coming together, right? Mm-hmm. Like pinch points where mm-hmm. these moose are going to be coming through. Mm-hmm. And if you set up there, because here's the thing about a moose: we saw a moose this year walked by us on the lake, and within two hours, it had gone four miles back the drainage and bedded down up on a hillside, wandering after wandering around looking for cows. You cannot catch a moose that's walking that fast. Yeah. yeah, it's basically like, yeah. impossible. So you either got to stop them, call them in, be kind of close to them right out of the gate. So try and position yourself where multiple valleys are coming together because then you're going to have moose coming through valleys from different areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that we're looking for. Yeah. We okay. spend a lot of time in the glass. That's that's our primary thing. We, okay. we get into a spot that we know that they're going to come into and we sit there in glass and glass and glass. Okay. Good, good spotting scope and good binos. It, it'll make a world of difference. So... so I know we've kind of mentioned this before in the in the gear, mm-hmm. but you said you said bring you know three bug nets mm-hmm. for, your, oh, yeah. for your head minimum. So, so how how much does that interfere with your hunting? A lot. You can't yeah. really see a thing. Yes, the, so. <laughs> Justin always compares looking through a head net as to like when you take it off versus when you're looking through it. It's you see an HD with it off, but when you have it on, it's like looking in 360 yeah like you can't, you, can't you just can't see 360 anything. like 360p resolution that's not that's not a resolution you mean 1080p oh yours are your, no, oh, i'm talking oh yours is 720 bottom of the barrel oh yeah i'm wow. talking like okay you, you yeah, can't hardly make out what's happening yeah, you can't it's, see it's, been, it's, it's been so long since we even heard that resolution yeah, holy right. mackerel yeah, yeah i guess you're right yeah i'm i'm talking <laughs> flip phone camera it's not like 8k yeah no 8k yeah so yeah, yeah. No, so but that's what we're wow. that's what we're looking for. And then yeah. I think one of the big things is 
how do I know that this moose is a moose I want to shoot? Yeah. 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 That's okay. That's ultimately what it is. I mean, I guess one of your things, what do you, what should you anticipate to see as far as moose numbers? Yeah. And I would say that well, could be well, everybody's, everybody's very requ- few. Okay. So I'm sorry, you know, but like everybody's required to take this, this orientation class, right? Yeah. So, so, but you, even though they, t- they're required to take the orientation class, you said that people, they pass up a, a giant moose. Oh yeah. I you mean, know, so, I could so, show you, I could show you video after video of guys um, that are like, oh, I don't know if it's 60. I don't know if it's si- or 50. I don't even know if it's 50. I don't know if it's yeah. 50. And they shoot it at 63 inches. And you're like, so how do you, so then, so then what's the judge? How do you know? How, so how can you measure something? Here out are there? a few things. And I'm sure there's other yeah. guys with more experience on it. Yeah. Um, but what I've observed with these moose and they teach you in the orientation, how to figure out, you know, how wide their head is and then try and like move that over. And then mm. other guys, you can take your reticle if you know how big it is and how far they are. And you can kind of, that's what judge. I was thinking at first. Yeah. yeah, yeah so there's, those are, those are really good ways um, to do it and to, to get a good field judge form, but still it leaves a lot. You're just like, there's such a big animal, right? Yeah. That their antlers actually look small proportionately to them. Yeah. yeah. And so one of the things that we started looking for was um, square tops yep. on these bulls. And so I look over at the, uh, yeah, they yeah, have this like yeah. uh, younger, younger, bull, over there. younger bulls seem to come up and they round, mm-hmm. they just, they like round off and then come back down. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, they're just kind of round like this. Yeah. And then the bigger bulls, when you're looking at them, they come up and they just square off. And then they come back down and you see it on any of the big bulls. Like when you see a big bull and it faces you, they come up and they square off. And from the side, like they look super thin. They look super thin. Yeah. It's because they, they start white, they start laying out like this, you know, as they get older. And, uh, they, so when they turn sideways to you, it looks like you're not even seeing it, they, you know, like that. You're and then they turn this way on them. it's weird. and they look like they just got these big square tops and then they just look, they just got this mass yeah. on them. That's. It, it, you know it when you see it like yeah. you're gonna know you know it's a big bull when you when you see it yeah. like a mature bull yeah. but it is helpful to see other bulls but there's you know there's no way i can't just give you a formula for how to know a bull's big well that's a good idea though i mean what, what you just said was just you know look at look at where it's screwed off you know, that yeah. being said i i mean i killed a giant bull not last year but the year before mm-hmm. that had none of that he had big wide pans so he didn't look like he was flat from the side Mm -hmm. he had the round tops but he Mm -hmm. had points everywhere um the biggest thing i'd say is that if you think it's close to that 50 make sure it has four brow tines if it doesn't have four brow tines don't pull the trigger Mm -hmm. so um as i again look at your moose over there well (laughs) yeah there's different things if you know for sure and we've we have a lot of, of experience at judging these things at this point yeah But if you think it's really close to that 50 inch mark and you're not Mm -hmm. sure it could be 48, could be somewhere in that ballpark, if it doesn't have four brow tines, don't shoot it. It, That keeps you safe. Um, But if it has four brow tines, fire away. Gotcha. So, gotcha. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's the easy one, but it still, it still begs the question, how do you know whether to shoot the moose or not? Because I've watched guys and guys have shown me video. They're terrified too. I bet you that they're, that I bet you that, especially they're, they're you shoot one under 50, you lose your moose and you get a fine. Yeah, that's big fine. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not tiny. No. Yeah, so it is yeah. a big deal. And the weight of that, yeah, it should, but it also shouldn't um, ruin the hunt for you mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. And what you're looking for is a mature bull. And I'll just say this out in the area that we hunt, the only bull we've ever killed under 60 inches is my brother's bull three years ago. And it was like 56, 57. Yeah. Yeah. Um, had four brows. I like how you rank on your brother a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, but I mean, it's a heck of a bull. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a giant bull. A, it's it's a almost bull. a book bull. But what yeah. I'm saying is that any mature bull that you see, yeah. um, in the areas that we are, are going to mm-hmm. be right around that 60 inch mark, mm-hmm. you know, way over 50. Yeah. Um, but they're so deceptive. I mean, there's times that you're just like the bull I shot this year. We thought if you watch the video, the, uh, we, taco bull. Yeah. The taco bull. Okay. Yeah. 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 He that thought, we thought he was 60 inches yeah. roughly. Yeah. Yeah. And we get up there, he's 69 inches. Yeah. yeah. Way bigger. The, the problem oh, wow. was his body was so big yeah. that it made his antlers gotcha. look small. Like gotcha. he was just, the, he's the biggest. And, he's so how are you able to judge that one? How'd you know it was a shooter then? Huh? How'd you know it was a shooter? Just big square tops on him. Like yeah, you got it. was the square tops bull thing. has more than a few and brow got, tines. He has four brow tines, but you could tell when he's, when he's looking at you, he's got those, he's just got that squared off top. Yeah. Look to him and yeah. he's big. And when they turn sideways and that paddles way back behind their hump. Yeah. yeah. And wavy for some reason, older bulls 
from what we've seen, have typically been get like they a get little that little wave. wave to them, and they yeah. start getting yeah. they just get funky as they get older. Yeah, they're a funky animal, though. Yeah, I think they're super cool looking. Yeah, yeah. and every one of them's a little bit different, but yeah, definitely. Gotcha. I mean, if you're if you're inexperienced, wait for the four brow tines. Yeah, um, four brow tines. Some four, areas of Alaska, so, there's most of these bulls have five and six brow tines. Gotcha. So so what we've so what we've gotten there is basically four brown tines and squared off tops. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's easy for people. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that helps them. And yeah. I'm sure that, you know, they'll, they'll start figuring stuff out. Yeah. yeah uh, if you watch some of our videos, maybe they can, these bulls, they have that look to them. They, we just call it squared off. They just kind of got this look where, yeah. So watch more on, limitless videos. On my bull from this Billy, year in particular, Billy you can see this some good side videos profile. Too. Yeah. That side profile. It, it's very evident on my bull from gotcha. this year. Yeah. And it's just super skinny looking from the side, yeah. but Okay. Laid out really beautifully. Gotcha. So, so now, so now you've killed this animal, this magnif- not magnificent creature that yeah. God that God created, put on the earth, mm-hmm. and said, in Genesis chapter nine, you can kill this thing. Yeah. Just want to plug that. Yeah. Um. So now you're ready to butcher it out. Yeah. Uh. This is got to be a monumental task. Definitely not a light task. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> How does one manage butchering an animal of that size? Whittle away. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I, nope, I've never done one myself. I know of a guy that has. Okay. Okay. Um, so you always have help. Yeah. You know, the biggest thing when you can do everything, the hardest thing to do is to roll them over. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you get it, you get into these moose. Mm-hmm. So you shoot a moose and you get up to it and the sheer size of it. I mean, they're laying on their side and they're almost up to your waist. Mm-hmm. Right. Just the, just and pure meat and they're 10 feet long. Right. And they're just laying and it's just monumental. A rear quarter. We are, we have a picture of a the front, front quarter, quarter is as and, tall as you. Yeah. Taller. It's taller than me. I remember front. that picture. Yeah. yeah. So it's taller yeah. than me. Yeah. Um, rear quarters can weigh anywhere between 120 and 180 pounds. Yeah. So big. I mean, you're talking yeah. about chunks of meat yeah. here. Yeah. It's all, it yeah. weighs almost as much as Colton does. Yeah. And so yeah. it's so important to have two guys um, working it up. Right. Yeah. And so you get, you get to working this thing up, cutting it up. Um, you take the quarters, the quarters off all your bone meat, get mm-hmm. that thing as light as possible on now, one side. Now, again, you cannot bone it out. No. Okay. You can't bone so it I'm out. So I'm just reiterating yeah. that fact. And that if does, you could bone it out, that would be so much better. It does but, change on exact location yeah. so it, okay. it varies a bit most, you have to read through the regs most okay. in alaska because you're yeah. so far back the idea is that it keeps the the meat from getting in big piles and spoiling okay um, yeah. so it keeps the meat st- spread out you know on the bone yeah. okay um so we're working these things up we're putting them in game bags and mm-hmm. um then the two you got to roll this thing over somehow uh and so two guys are just heaving and hoeing as hard as they possibly can to get this thing yeah. flopped over on its other side yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that I will say when it comes to processing these moose is I try to divide it up into bags, um, that are manageable, especially mm-hmm. the boned out meat. Um, get those into, and you can put them in as many bags as you want to, but here's the deal with it is when you pack out your moose by law, the antlers are the last thing that come out of the field. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No the matter antlers what. Are the I like last that. thing. And yep. so do not under any circumstances, take your head out first. Don't uh-huh. even move the head. Yeah. From, yeah. Leave it at the site. You yeah. just leave it there. And I'm not like, so it's not like the head has to be the last thing out to your destination in town. It has to be the last thing down to the, down to the Oh, beach, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It yeah. has to be, if you move so, your meat away from the carcass for bears. Yeah. So if you move it a hundred yards, you yeah. move all the meat first and then you move that. So you I've got a question. Move. What yeah, about, go so, so like, um, let's say you're, let's say you're quartering out this animal and, um, you need to be like able to roll it over. It's so one thing that went through my head was, well, well, if you cut the head off, it'll be a lot easier, you know, to roll it. Can you cut the head off and have the head laying right there next to the Oh, animal? yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's yeah, fine. That's fine. Yeah, so when I, you start packing, though, right. that head is the last thing you pack. Gotcha. Make we, sure gotcha. That, I like that. We I, actually kind of really nice. use the head as leverage. We typically roll the head over, get the horns pointed oh, down, yeah. and then we can get the legs, each okay. one on a leg. And when we lift it, that head helps snap the body yeah. back over. I was just thinking that might be... And I, I was thinking it. the opposite. I was thinking that the head might make it more difficult, but I guess I it also want to. I also want to stress one other thing when it comes to butchering this moose. Um, you have to take every scrap of meat off of these moose, and I say that because, uh, like, you look at the Idaho rules um, in Idaho for meat salvage. You don't mm. have to take neck meat or rib meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of states that are kind of along those lines where neck mm. meat is not a requirement to take, but. 
up there in Alaska, I mean, if you leave two pounds of meat on that thing, they are taking your moose. They are finding <laughs> yeah. you. I am yeah. not, mm-hmm. and I know multiple people that have yeah. walked through this. So do you have to? You have to. You have to. And you, you can't you be to, sloppy either. You have to grab yeah. all the rib meat too. Oh yeah, every you ounce get, of rib meat. Front. We sit there. We get the moose worked up, and then we spend about an hour carving meat between. Vertebrae. All the little bones on the vertebrae and front everything. tenderloins. That's awesome. The, the front tenderloins are one that people typically miss. I, I'm sorry. On an Alaskan moose, those things are huge. Listen, when I first started hunting, I started hunting, you know, you guys know I started hunting because I wanted to uh, feed my family and I didn't, you know, yeah. I wasn't making yeah. a lot of money. And so, I, you know, I was like, I'm going to kill animals and feed my family. That was yeah. my, my primary. As somebody yeah. who has that, I still have that mindset. Yeah. Uh, even though, you know, it's a lot less necessary now for me. Um, I love that. I love that role. Yeah. I love, yeah. I love no, hearing it's a great it. It's and bizarre I think that, to me that the, it's not that way everywhere. It's insane to me that there are people that kill animals and then they'll they'll just you know like they'll they'll take the back strap and then they'll leave the rest of it. Well, we were hunting yeah. in Colorado. Yeah. Why don't you tell that story? I was. I've seen some janky stuff out there. Man. I I've seen a couple of court. I've seen a quarter left on an elk before. Uh, you or five, six miles back there. And I've seen a quarter and a backstrap left on an elk. Definitely not shot up. I've seen some crazy, crazy things on elk. I don't, I don't understand their rules or I don't understand why people would do that. But I mean, we typically, we take everything that we can. In mm-hmm. Alaska, you have to like, the meat that's around the trachea and the throat, you have yeah. to take all that. Um, if some guts get on it, wash it off take it you, that's that's the like back you, strap of the neck yeah i mean that's you, what they would, yeah. you literally cannot leave anything yeah. but in other places people seem to be well fine yeah so, so but again so most of your rules most of these guys that are going up to alaska alaska has these most stringent meat rules there are okay so i don't any, disagree with almost them. anywhere yeah. else yeah whether we agree or disagree yeah, yeah, but yeah almost yeah. anywhere else your culture where you come from yeah. a lot of guys and i know a lot of guys personally like you will find a carcass in the woods and all the neck meat will still be there and all the rib meat. Yeah. They've taken the quarters and the loins off of it. Yeah. yeah. And That's it. you yeah. you pull something like that in Alaska. And, you're and like in I said, I said yeah. in one of the other parts, you know, the ranger, they'll come flying right over. They'll see the moose laying down there out in the brush and they land and they walk out there and check it. And you're you're done for, right? And so just yeah. really uh, like so what's legal in one place is not legal in Alaska. What I would yeah. what I would like to just kind of include as you know, is um uh, when we're thinking about these sorts of things, we think like, okay, so, so in Genesis chapter nine, we'll talk about this in another podcast, you know, a little bit more deeper, but I'm just bringing to mind in Genesis chapter nine, you know, after the flood, Noah is basically given the commission that says, you know, all of mankind, guess what? You guys used to be vegetarians. Now you can't be vegetarians anymore because of health reasons or whatever, you know, yeah. theory. So um, you're allowed to now hunt and kill your animals. Yeah. And then in Proverbs, there's a verse that's written that a righteous man cares for his animals. And, uh, you know, the, even, even the kindness of the wicked is cruel. Yeah. You know, where as forget about the laws, if you're, if you're a righteous person and if you're trying to do what's right, according to, you know, God's will and according to, let's just, yeah, you know, like, like, if you're trying to do it, you should respect that animal from start to finish. Oh yeah. And, and part of that is, okay, you've, you've now killed a life form. And you ought to pack out the meat. Yeah. And I, cause I hate, I, I'm not, I, I'm a, I'm a pretty, I don't, I don't like laws that force us to do things, but I think that if it makes sense, we should do that. So. Oh, yeah. totally. You know, and so that, yeah. that's, that's where we're going with this, right? Is we're talking about all this meat, right? So we're talking about this huge animal, the size of a Volkswagen laying on the ground. You got a thousand pounds of meat that you've now just worked up off of this animal. Okay. Uh, you have to take every scrap. So, yeah. I mean, so now packing it out, like that's got to be a lot. So this is a big part of our whole hunting yeah. strategy yeah. here is when I see a moose and you are going to see moose, if you hunt up there that are farther out than you can possibly get them back successfully. Cause mind yeah. you, when we're hunting, the weather is generally pretty warm. Um, at night, 40 degrees, a lot of times 50, 55 degrees during the day, uh, which gives you a few day window. If you take good care of your meat to get it out. Um, think with your moose, 10 loads of meat. So if you have two guys, that's five loads each, you're going to see moose and you're going to look up there and you can walk five, six miles off the lake, yeah. but you can you pack it, pack yeah. it in three days yeah. back to the lake? Now here's the other clincher. Remember how we talked about weather and oh. weather delaying planes. Yeah. Okay. These are all factors that I'm thinking about when I see a moose and it's like, okay, I have a 70 inch bull sitting on that hillside right there. He's five miles off the lake. 
if I give it everything I got, I can pack that down to the lake in three days and he's not going to spoil. What I didn't account for is the fact that a storm was rolling in and now I've got another three days and now my moose is spoiled. And so these are all things that we need to be thinking through when we're hunting these moose. And this is a huge consideration because there's a lot, you're going to see moose that you could kill that you will waste. And um, you got to think about like, am I willing, as you're walking out to that moose, think about this as you're walking out to the moose. This is my challenge. Or before you walk. <laughs> yeah, well, no, as you're walking out there, if you're going to go hunt it and you're like, I think I can do this. As you're walking out there, ask yourself if there's two of you, am I ready to walk back over this five times in the next two days with 130 pounds on my back? Can I physically do it? Because if you can't, you need to let that, try and call the moose closer, let him go, wait for another one. We, we packed one three seasons ago. It was, what, a mile and a half air miles off the lake? 1.7. 1.7 air miles. About killed us. It took everything we had to get that moose down to the lake. And another consideration is like, after you shoot that moose, how long, how far is that moose going to travel? Because it's not necessarily going to drop right there. If, if somebody's a bad shot, let's say somebody shoots wrong or they pull or something, it could be yeah. that, that moose might, yeah, might travel yeah. further away and make it even worse. I got to say something about that. I know we're getting a little bit out of order here with the shooting of the moose thing. We get a lot of, we get a lot of comments about guns being weak and why are we having to shoot these things so many times? We don't have to shoot them that many times. I could shoot a moose once and you put it right through the lungs and shoulders and that thing's going to go down. Um, over time, it's going to go down. Correct. So what a lot of people don't realize is that moose is stand, generally speaking, when we shoot one, they're standing in an opening. They've come out of a thick brush patch. You can't hardly, even in an opening, you can't hardly roll these things over. When they get into alder and get tangled up, you're you can't done move for. a moose. Yeah. Yeah. And so the reason why we're shooting so many times, and this is why I would recommend keep shooting as long as they're standing, yeah. is first off, you don't always know how good your first shot was. Yeah. I've never lost an animal with two bullets in it. I've lost a handful of animals, never a moose with one bullet in it. Um, you keep shooting because you want them to go down in that opening where they're at. Yeah. And you want to hit some bone too. You don't want to just put it in the lungs because it takes a while for them to bleed out yeah. in the lungs. And so you want to keep hammering that moose so it goes down in that opening. It's going to give you the best chance how much meat loss were you seeing uh, in doing that? Darren, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not compa nothing comparable. Nothing, uh, nothing compared uh, to so those. So bloodshot struggle. meat, do you have to pack out bloodshot meat? Uh, no, but here's, what, here's a tip for you when we're talking about the butchering. And th this is really the whole thing right here. Yeah. We're after the meat, right? Yeah. We're trying to get yeah. some meat together. Um, anything that is damaged, here's what we do is, and this is told to us by the rangers, um, I take pictures of it. You take pictures yeah, okay. of anything that has bloodshot. <laughs> And you cut, so take a picture of it, cut it out, and you can throw it off to the side, but make sure you're just cutting out the bloodshot meat, but take pictures of it. And then it makes it so much easier. You don't have to walk back out there. You can, if, yeah, you're, there's no if questions. you're talking to the um, state patrol or whatever, you can be like, look, this is, you know, this is what we got out. This is what was bad. And I, after I'm done butchering up the moose, I take a picture of the carcass. Yeah. So that we have evidence of, okay, you can see This how is much, what we completed. Yeah, well, yeah. especially it's this just year. really good documentation. Like, if they wanted to come out and say, hey, we want to see your moose, like my moose in particular, we had the bear get on it. Like, what are you going to do? Uh, I can't show you this moose that's been covered and rototilled over by a grizzly. Like, we just can't. Yeah. So you take a photo of it, and it, it completely eliminates all the questions behind yeah. it. So Yeah, okay. So then... Um, as you're doing that, uh, I guess, um, in the midst of the hunt, so now you've, you've killed an animal, you're packing it out and everything. Are you, what's, what's the risk of stumbling upon other hunters and really like, what would be the, the lines of etiquette when you're dealing with that? So I had the situation that I told you about where we shot a moose. So we started out on this big lake down here and there's a little lake up here and I came back here and I shot a moose here. And I think it was like four to five miles back to the main lake, but it was only two and a half over to this little lake. And so I decided to pack the moose instead of four to five miles, decided to pack it two and a half miles. And when we did, there was hunters on this other lake and we didn't disrupt their hunt, but our plane had to come in multiple times and pull moose meat out of this small lake. Right. And so put yourself in their shoes for a second. They were camped on another side of this lake. They've spent all this money. They've gone all the way out there. So you're on one side. They're on the opposite side. They've gone all yeah. the way out there. They're the only ones on this lake. And all of a sudden, somebody's flying moose meat off of their lake, right over the top of them because they're glassing, you know, and they're yeah. waiting for moose. And so, you know what? Did it's, they write nasty It's letters? legal. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
you can do it. Yeah. But put yourself talk in their shoes. It. Yeah. Like, would you want somebody doing that over the top of you? Yeah. And so then here's I'll give you one more example and we can kind of wrap this up, put a pin in that that subject. Is um there's a lake and it's a motorized lake and it's a big lake. But the way that it lays out a it's motorized can, lake. So you can run a motor and a okay, boat okay, on it. Yeah. Not all lakes you can you gotcha, do that. Gotcha, okay. And so but it lays out in a way that even though it's a big lake, you can see across the whole side of the hill. And if, and multiple, it's big enough lake that you could put a couple groups of people on it. It's like mm-hmm. 10 miles long. But from 10 miles, you can look across this thing and see moose. So here's, here's a real story that happened. These guys spot a big moose. They get up there. They're older guys. They start waddling up the hill. After they're like, I, feel, I don't know if I that's feel like word. that was a little derogatory. That was no, terrible. that's not derogatory. For people, <laughs> <laughs> they're older guys. Okay. They're waddling. They're right? hobbling. Go ahead. Well, hobbling. Hobbling. <laughs> hobbling. So these older guys that have been dreaming about getting up there for a long time, they see this moose. They get to the other side, and they start walking up the hill. Well, as they're walking up the hill, they get away. The moose is like a mile off the lake. They're walking up the hill to go kill this bull. All of a sudden, younger guys see the bull from somewhere else and they see him come across the lake. These older guys see these guys come across the lake, pull up near their boat and start hiking. And it turns into a race. And the younger guys outrun the older course, guys. Of course, yeah. And kill this moose. Yeah. Okay. Like, it's the millennials. Millennials. <laughs> Pretty sure he- we all fall into that group. So nah, well, what, what is, what is I it? bring it back to the heart of what we're all trying to do when we yeah. go to Alaska. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's this place. There's a lot of combat I got hunting called that the happens. Boomer the other day, by the way, <laughs> there's a lot of combat <laughs> hunting that happens down here, right? Where you're, there's just so there's little space, yeah. lots of hunters right. up there. There's plenty of space for everybody. And so I would just, I would come back to every decision I'm making up there. And this is something that I've grown in a lot yeah. as I've hunted more. Um, every decision I make up there, I would, I would really question how I'm impacting another hunter's situation. So like this last year we were on a lake and we got up to the top of this mountain and we could see down to another camp on another lake and there's moose around there. And one of the things, there was a moose, there was a big bull four miles up from them, up river. It was too far for them to hunt it. But we could have floated down the river, killed this moose and floated it out to their lake and flown it out. We wouldn't have interfered with they weren't going to kill this bull and that wouldn't have been a factor we would have killed the moose taken it down and then flown it out of their lake that was an op like it was a real live thing that we could have done and we knew the guy and we knew the guy but i told but colton and i were like how would we we just put ourselves in there how would we feel if we switched lakes if if it was just switched yeah how would we feel would i like somebody packing a big bull to my lake and then flying. I'm out there to just be peaceful and enjoy it. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And so just think about it through that lens when you're, when you're thinking, if you do run into other hunters, which hopefully you won't even have that issue. If you do see them, don't walk right over the top. Of so them. It's, it's really treat others as you would have them treat you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's like the a other kicker to that whole Bible verse about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, well, well you, you know, uh, that, that, that quote is uh, famously attributed to Abraham Lincoln. Oh, when I, when I was, when I was in middle school, I was in middle school and I remember that was on a big poster in, in the classroom and said, you know, Abraham Lincoln and gave it yeah, to him. That's awesome. And I said, I said, I'm pretty sure he's not the first one. Yeah. <laughs> and so I got it. Matthew seven twelve. Yeah. I actually got detention for that. Jesus sermon on yeah. the Mount. The real right. kicker to his story about that moose is where it was, we could have killed it and they weren't going to kill it. It ended up going to them and they killed it on the very last oh, day of season. Them. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely yeah. awesome. So, what you do so, impacts other people. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Because he was going to go home without a moose. And we ended up taking two great... We took two record books. Yeah, and you guys here. were good. It, yeah, we yeah. were great. Yeah. We had a great time. I, I think that, that goes to a, like a lot of people. We see what other people have. And yeah. we say like, oh, I want that. Yeah. But we don't really appreciate what we have. Yeah, it's called yeah. covetousness. Is that yeah. what that is? <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> weird. That's that's there's a term for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very so, good. Well, yeah, is there no, anything so, else that you think that we should cover in regards to the hunt? I know that next time we're going to talk about get, packing that meat out and, and, and flying home and whatnot. So, but this time, like, is there anything else in regards to the actual hunt that, you know, in the midst of the hunt that we should, that you feel people should, should No, remember? I think that's about it. I think the etiquette side of it is just huge. Yeah. I mean, enjoying it for more than just the, 
We got to be careful that we don't get so yeah. kill crazy I, I, that we miss out on the. I do have a question. Go ahead. So, um, so in regards to hunts, and and people are getting ready to do a moose hunt, and they, they you know, all right. So, let's say let's say they're they're East Coast hunters. They've killed whitetail and they've killed, you know, well let's say they only killed whitetail and squirrels, um, because not many East Coast hunters get a bear. But um, let's say, you know, it's a big it's a big ordeal. Should they set their eyes first on an elk? beforehand or something western before they upgrade to alaska you know what i'm saying like like steps well i i want to hear colton's thought on this too but i think that a man's got to know where he and be honest with himself where he's at physically it's so yeah you have to know your limitations and that comes back to what we talked about in the very beginning guided versus diy yeah um here's the thing i will say though is that if it's been your dream to go and kill an Alaskan moose and you take the steps and you're prepared and you're knowledgeable about what's going on and you're able to take care of yourself. And you listen to this podcast series. Yeah. yeah. I really, <laughs> Multiple times. I yeah. really think that you should, I think that you should do it. I've hunted, I was hunting sheep. The first sheep I ever killed met these guys from Australia and they were hunting sheep for the first time. They'd saved their whole lives. They were 70 years old and this, they were, we were talking and they were having a good time, but at the same time he looks at me and he says, I shouldn't have waited so long to do it. He's like looking at the mountains. He's like, I really want to go up that mountain, but it's an impossibility for me. Yeah. And so I would just encourage you, like the world will tell you, you got to go through this, 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 and this. All these like, like extra steps. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wait till you're retiring at 65 or whatever. It, it, life's short enough. You, you got to do, you got to do these dreams while you physically can. Cause there is a reality that one day we won't physically be able to do what we do. Yeah, and it, the thing for me... Yeah, you were talking to me about that the other day. I think one yeah. big encouragement about the hunt that I want to be in this series is how I started hunting moose was I would pick huckleberries. Huckleberries yeah, up yeah, in the mountains. Yeah, oh, I know, yeah. And yeah. sell them. They're delicious. Yeah, and I would sell them, and that's how I would pay for moose hunting. I would pick enough huckleberries in the summer in my, in my free time. I'd take my free days off, and I would, uh, I would go and I'd pick huckleberries and pay for it. And so... It is a it is a manageable thing that can be done. Yeah, and can be done while we're young. I learned a long time ago that we spend money on the things that we have at, that we value. Yeah. Well, you think about like how much how much is Colton's iPhone? Exactly. And then you say you know, <laughs> can totally afford a what's that? Yeah. I, I got it on discount because I traded in my old phone. So I'm just giving you <laughs> I'm just giving you hate. I know. Yeah. yeah. We're recording this whole podcast. I know, right? It's got yeah. value. <laughs> Oh, yeah. In case, so, in case anybody is wondering, I'm an I'm an Android PC guy. And Colton's yeah. Apple all the way. Yeah. So. so I think that those are really <laughs> yeah, the big the big factors. Yeah, um, okay. When it comes to the hunt, I mean, yeah. finding the moose just, again. Yeah. And then I just, think and just so do much it, of this like, centers around a good air taxi guy. Um, oh, get yeah. references for him if you don't have a reference already for him. I think I think something just to kind of harp on what what we what you mentioned a few moments ago it is, you know, everything's achievable but you have to be able to take those steps. Like you have to like start with your first step. So your first step yeah. is the air taxi. Yeah. You're not going to do anything if you don't make that phone call. Yeah. You're not going to be yeah. able to do anything. You're not going to be able to accomplish anything. If the first phone call isn't made and you don't start yeah. there and then you're not going to, you know, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to, if you don't do the next step and the next step. And if you look at it at this, as this like monumental task and you say, I want to do like, I want to do an Alaskan moose hunt. And you're like, Oh man, I really want to do an Alaska moose hunt. And all you keep on saying is I want to do an Alaska moose hunt and I want to do an Alaska moose hunt. Yeah. You're thinking about it as it's like you're where your mindset is and you get trapped in your mind. And we do that a lot. Like, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we get really like trapped in our mind and we say like, oh, but instead when you break it down, like in this series, we're breaking it down into like little pieces and we have like, okay, here's this piece and here's this piece and here's this piece and here's this piece. Don't get overwhelmed over the whole, like all the pieces. Yeah. Start with the first one. Yeah. Start yeah. with the first piece. Then work on the next one. Yeah, then, that's good. You know, yeah, yeah. And then that way, you know, it, it, it's it's kind of like this. Um, when I'm thinking about it, is I, I think like it, it's it's just a moose, and it's just an Alaska. It's an animal. Yeah. On this planet, it's not. It's not like an alien over in Mars. It's yeah. not like it's not like entirely unachievable. Can, you can, can you hunt you, those. <laughs> not yet okay. not yet come on Elon but the, but the day may come so it but it's like it, it is something that's achievable it's physical and it's here right now yeah, yeah. and and they're cool. out there right now there's there's moose walking around yeah. at, at this moment there with are your, tags with that your are name on them with yeah. your name on it yeah yeah and with my name on it tomorrow's no. not promised yeah 
Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. That's well, that's true. And yeah. I think that that's, that's one thing that, you know, the recent situation in, in 2020 that yeah. happened, which I'm not going to mention by name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no, no, no. But that situation happened. People were so terrified because they didn't think about death and they didn't think like, Oh, my life can end. Yeah. You know? And instead they were like, you know, they, they were just shocked over it. They didn't think like, Oh yeah. Life is like, life can be over pretty quickly. Yeah. And, um, but instead, you know, and so instead of looking at these goals and being like, oh, I want to do this, but it's entirely unachievable. You go, you know, actually one step at a time, it's yeah. entirely achievable. Yeah, totally. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that's a great place to stop and move in and transition into part four here, but yep. just wrapping this up. Um, I think the heart of, as we're just talking about this and going back and forth, the heart of the the hunt isn't so much the moose itself, but getting out there and experiencing the whole thing and just want to make sure that we don't taint that experience by misjudging moose, not handling things properly or overestimating what we can do versus what's realistic. Right. And so, yeah, yeah I think that's the, I think that we achieved that in this one for yeah. sure. Yeah. So anything you want to add Colton? I just say soak in the experience moose or mo no moose. It's, it's just an incredible place. <laughs> awesome well thank you for joining us in this part three make sure to check out part four when we talk about getting your moose out back to town and then back home uh moose the meat and the antlers and everything and kind of finishing out this experience hopefully there'll be some good stuff there so hope you'll join us next time and until then god bless you and have an awesome day <laughs>